Coming up, wrangling cattle. This pipsqueak cowpoke shows them who's boss. From ancient chants to modern dance, Zeke guides the way. And drawing a crowd with Ozzy. Harry Buto manages his ranch in Barry, Texas, with the help of a very special cowpoke. Every morning, Pee Wee, a 19-month-old border collie, is waiting in his kennel, raring to go herd cattle. Hey, Pee Wee, what you doing there, buddy? Ready to go to work? I had thought about other breeds, other herding breeds, but uh, the border collie made more sense. Uh, I guess the best thing I've ever heard about them was that they were the Einstein of the canines. Come on. You know, they're just super smart. Once you, once you show them something one time, basically they got it. Pee Wee is top dog on Harry's 1,000 acre cattle ranch, but he started life as the runt of the litter. He was the smallest one in the litter, which people mostly call the runt. I mean, he wasn't weak or anything. He was just the smallest puppy. And he stayed that way all the way through pretty much. And I just, from the day one, saying, you know, calling him Pee-wee, and it just stuck. Harry needs a tough dog to herd 200 head of cattle from one pasture to another. Hey. Unlike traditional sheepdogs, cattle dogs need to be a little more aggressive to get the job done. You want him to have a certain amount of bite because that cow needs to respect the dog. If it does not respect the dog, it's going to walk right over it. Early on, Harry could see that toughness was just one of Pee Wee's attributes. Get him up! Pee Wee was pretty well balanced. He had quicker responses, and although the others enjoyed working, you could see that he enjoyed it more. Pee Wee, no matter how tired he was, it was full speed. And when you did stop, he was so tired, sometimes he'd just kind of fall over or just drop down, but he wouldn't quit. Pee Wee doesn't stop at cattle. He just can't help himself. The herding instinct is in this Border Collie's genes. It doesn't make any difference if it's chickens, <laughs> ducks, somebody can come by on a bicycle or a four-wheeler, they're gonna try to herd it. Tomorrow, Harry will put Pee Wee's herding abilities to the test at his first cattle dog trial. Harry has to keep an eye out for heat exhaustion. Border Collies are often so intent on their work, they won't stop when they get too hot or too tired. There have been Border Collies that'll get out there and work and get hot and just uh, have a stroke, you know, heat stroke and die. So you got to be real careful with them to keep them from hurting themselves or killing themselves. Pee Wee herds almost intuitively. Harry doesn't give him too many commands because Pee Wee just seems to know what to do. In the ranch uh, setting, you want that. You want that dog to think because you can't see him all the time. And uh, you show him something one time, and he'll just turn around and surprise you every time because he'll just he'll go do it automatically. You do something once, he remembers it. It looks like he understands you. When you look at him and you're telling him something, it, says, it looks like he's just reading your thoughts. As dusk falls, they practice one last time for tomorrow's cattle dog trial, where Pee Wee will compete against 60 other first timers. I set some obstacles up to practice and to help him to know what we're gonna be up against. Ah. You time yourself and you think you're going pretty fast, but you're really not. Well, the clock's ticking. Pee Wee has to herd three calves through a series of obstacles. The time limit adds pressure, unlike day-to-day -day work on the ranch. And I told somebody once, I said, you know, if they would just forget that clock, I said, I could do all that stuff real good. But that time starts working on your mind. Harry's wife, Judy, has been watching their progress. Harry does pretty well um, when Pee Wee does well. There are days when the, it's frustrating, but he stays with it and Pee Wee learns and Harry's happy. <laughs>
The cattle dog trial is something new for Harry, too. Until he got peewee, he'd never felt the urge to compete. It's still hard to, to think about doing it without getting a little queasy, you know, because I feel like if, uh, if he doesn't do good, it's not going to be as much his fault as it's going to be my inexperience. That feel good? Pee-wee's doing real good. So you think he's ready? I think he's ready. That's good. You do. The Lone Star Cattle Dog Futurity is a competition for dogs aged two and under. The, the, the thing that we're trying to achieve here is make the dog do the work. Larry Inerarity is the event organizer. <laughs> We're trying to teach the ranchers around the world to use cattle dogs in an effective way that they don't run weight off of them. And there's a right way to do that and a wrong way to do that. After you've done this obstacle, you'll proceed to this obstacle over here. Ranchers from all across the country have come to compete for cash prizes and something else that money can't buy. Skeeter has one that he's wearing. It's a real, real nice belt buckle, and a lot of people are wanting to win that, just that belt buckle. Money's not important sometimes. It's a pride of wearing that Lone Star Cattle Dog Futurity belt buckle. Hey, when you open this gate, the rules of the competition are strict. The handler can't touch the livestock during the course. Once you go, yes, go on. In the competition, the dog has to bring the cattle around the obstacles and herd them into a pen, all in under seven minutes. Harry and the others eye the competition, hoping to pick up a few pointers. You need a, a good, strong dog that'll hold his ground. Maybe not just eat a cow up, but to stop them and, and not give. It takes a little more than bluff to bluff a cow. That cow, you can just bluff so long, and sooner or later, you're going to have one of them old huzzies step out of the herd and challenges you. And when that huzzy steps out of that herd and gives that dog a challenge, you've got to have the type of dog that'll meet that challenge. And if you have any weakness in your dog, it's going to show up when old, when old Sister Sue shows up. I think Harry's worked with Pee Wee long enough that he knows that Pee Wee's pretty strong. He can do whatever's asked of him. Our next entry is Harry Buteau with Pee Wee. Now it's Pee Wee's turn. He and Harry have to move three calves through obstacles and into a pen, all in under seven minutes. The calves are drawn at random, so it's the luck of the draw. Will Pee Wee's three be stubborn? Stop. Lie down. If you don't draw the right calves, you get one that's real flighty. You can have the best dog in the world, and it ain't going to help you. It seems to be going well, but Harry makes a mistake with the whistle. I did give him one or two wrong cues. We recovered from it. You know, I had to go back the other way, but he recovered from it real well. Kiwi's got them back on track. Now, he just has to move the three calves around the corner and into the pen. But time is running out. That was a good run. That's yep. exactly what a cow dog's supposed to do. There'll be no belt buckle for Harry today, but Pee Wee performed well. Not bad for the runt of the litter. You were relaxed, and that dog just did his thing. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. After the excitement of competition, Pee Wee's day job is waiting for him back at the ranch. He did great. He did absolutely great. Whether he won or not, he was still going to be the number one around the house, and he did do good, so that made it, that makes it even better. He's got a little bragging rights now.
Twice a day, at sunrise and sunset, the Zen Buddhists at this center meditate. Zeke, a six-year-old lab, is no exception. He's a guide dog to Sozan, a Zen priest. Zen is just being what you are, and he is very definitely being himself. He doesn't think about being himself, he is himself. And that's what we're all trying to do, is not be so self-conscious and not be so kind of mental about the whole thing. Sozan began losing his eyesight 14 years ago. He's blind in one eye and has only pinhole vision in the other. He's about five times more sensitive than most of the people I know. And it took us a while to learn each other's language, but we know each other about as well as, say, a married couple, I think. And it's an amazing relationship. When Zeke and Sozan arrived at this Zen center, Zeke had to get accustomed to some of the sounds. And the first time we had the drum, he totally freaked. And he insisted on running outside, and it was just, he was terrified. Nowadays, he doesn't respond at all. Intelligent, good-natured Labrador retrievers are widely used as guide dogs for the blind. Zeke has been guiding Sozan for the last four years. He is so much better at getting around and finding things. We walk down the street, he knows exactly what my routines are. He'll go into the correct door. He knows all of my doctor's appointments. He knows the eye doctor. He has relationships with all of these people. Zeke keeps an eye on Sozan in many different ways. If I get the mail and I accidentally drop something, um, he won't f go forward. And I'll wonder, well, they didn't dig a hole here all of a sudden, so um, it must be that I dropped something. He will actually go back and touch the piece of mail on the ground. So if I follow down his head, there's the thing I dropped. OK, sweetie. Labs are big dogs and are known for their gentle, loving dispositions. Hey. Hi. Zeke recently took on a new challenge. He and Sozan are performing in an experimental dance piece along with John and his guide dog, Dylan. If you guys walk across, and I'll tell you when to stop, Award-winning choreographer Allison Orr wants to take the piece to an international dance festival. And then lay down and roll all the way back, you two. I'm interested in exploring movement that happens in daily life. And I had always been drawn to the gestural vocabulary that happens between a person and a sky dot. OK, ready and forward? So I shadowed Sozan and Zeke for a while and actually learned their movement that they did and uh, used that kind of as the jumping off place for the piece. Let's try some new things with the dogs off harness and see how, how it goes with that, all right? OK. OK? <laughs> roll, 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 Sozan, roll. Stop. OK, I think we need to uh, put the dogs back on harness, because that's not going to work. I think a challenge for both dogs would be stamina, because we have to rehearse the piece over and over again. And, um, and that's tiring. That's tiring for us, and I think it's tiring for the animals. <laughs> Guide dogs normally lead their owner in a straight line until there's an obstacle in the way. It's unusual for them to weave around when they're not avoiding obstacles. Zeke's doing well. I got to turn. I'm running out of space. <laughs> Really, the point is to show that, that there's something artful and beautiful in a person's relationship with his dog. Tomorrow, they'll show the work in progress to a small audience. If the response is positive, they'll know the piece is festival ready. Once a week, Zeke and Sozan bring Zen meditation and pet therapy to a prison. T.J. Needham is director of inmate treatment services at the Travis County Jail. For most inmates, being in jail is a very stressful time. The situation of being incarcerated and loss of freedom uh, produces a lot of anxiety. 
Zeke comes in, uh, he's real calm, he's a calming influence, uh, and he brings that to the environment. And the inmates um, respond to that. Yeah, he's really jumping up to get out of the way to have you stop this. I'm glad for Sozon to bring him because it's, you know, I mean, to me it, it relaxes me a lot. You know, having to be locked up and, you know, thinking about when am I going to leave, when am I going to go back to rehab and so forth. And it's, it's gotten to where I can just not even think about it anymore. He doesn't care what people did. He doesn't care how long they've been in jail. He doesn't care anything about that. All he cares about is the relationship between the person and himself. That evening, Zeke and Sozan dance for an invited audience. It's a chance for Allison to judge whether the dogs know their cues well enough to go on tour. Carly leads Sozan left. Dancers cross paths in center stage. In a live performance, anything can happen. Carly guides Sozan in large circle to right. Because Sozan and John are visually impaired, they can't see us if uh, something goes wrong. If somebody uh, goes to the wrong place, if somebody forgets to call a cue. And exit. Zeke is definitely free spirit. Yeah, free spirit, kind of creative, more creative dancer, less of a, um, a technical master. Allison is happy with Zeke's performance. We're all really excited. I don't think the dogs are quite as excited, but I think that, uh, that we're gonna do really well. Zeke is one of my best teachers because he doesn't drag the future into the present. He doesn't get nostalgic or caught up in the past. He responds to whatever is right in front of him. He's the Dalai Lama of dogs. Is it? Yes, it's a dog. Ozzy, a five-year-old Chinese crested, works in PR. He and his owner, Helen Mitchell, work for the organization Hearing Dogs for Deaf People. Helen's not deaf herself, but works with hearing dogs. She's trained Ozzy to alert to important sounds, like a cooking timer. Ozzy's high energy would have been too much for a deaf person in their home, so Helen put his skills to good use as a public relations agent. His unusual looks draw attention to his fundraising demonstrations, where he shows the public how deaf people can benefit from hearing dogs. When Helen takes Ozzy for a walk, he wears a coat. Ozzy has coats for all types of weather. I don't just dress him up to, to look cute or to look silly or dress him up in silly outfits. Obviously having no hair, he feels the cold and the wet. When I put his coats on, um, I don't think he's overly happy. He's, I don't think he should ever have been a dog that had no hair, because he gets quite embarrassed about having his coats put on. He tends to look a bit, a bit shy. Bath night gets Ozzy squeaky clean for his demonstration tomorrow. All done? All finished. Helen rescued Ozzy from a shelter. He was placed there at eight months by owners who found him too wild, but Helen loves his personality. I think he, he thinks he's a, he's a Great Dane or an Irish wolfhound or something. He's such a little dog, he doesn't realize he's a little dog. Ozzy's got a huge personality. Ozzy loves running in the park with Helen's other dog, Tara. The Chinese Crested is a fine-boned, elegant, and graceful dog. The hairless variety has no hair except for tufts on the head, feet, and tail. Their skin can be more than one color, and their sickle-shaped tails are long and skinny. It's Sunday morning. Ozzy and Helen join other hearing dogs outside a local supermarket. Ozzy will demonstrate what a hearing dog does. If he was a person, he'd probably be one of these people that likes to be center of attention, you know. He's quite a show off. Because hearing dogs work primarily in the home, few people know about them. 
The organization regularly stages demonstrations in busy public places to raise awareness and funds. These hearing pups in training watch Ozzy the Pro. Since 1982, the organization has placed over 900 dogs all over the country. Ozzy shows how hearing dogs alert to sounds like the telephone, stove timer, and doorbell by touching their owner and leading them to the source of the sound. We're going to start with the telephone. So when the telephone rings, Ozzy will hear the sound. It's come and touch. What is it? Good boy. Good lad. Hearing dogs can also let their owner know someone's calling them. So you'll come and alert in exactly the same way. What is it? Yeah! <laughs> There's a different alert for the smoke detector to avoid confusion. What he'll do this time is actually drop to the ground because I don't want him to lead me to the smoke alarm because obviously it could be a fire and it's quite a dangerous situation. So he should come and find me. What is it? Good boy. And he's dropped to the floor. <laughs> Ozzy's popularity loosens purse strings. It cost 5,000 pounds, or about eight and a half thousand dollars US, to train a hearing dog. The money raised today will go towards training dogs for people like Jenny Smith, who received Riley last year. Riley's made the most enormous difference to my life, because it's very hard work and very tiring lip breeding, and you have a dog, and it helps to get you back into the hearing world. So, it really is absolutely fantastic. You're special, aren't you, Riley? You're very special. Riley changed Jenny's life, and many more lives will be enriched thanks to the PR work of a little hairless dog, Ozzy. <laughs>